I'm outside the Regent Cinema in Masterton, Fucka Audi Audi, and I'm wondering about the Wired Upper Film Festival and how popular it is, are people interested, and what's on? Yeah. Will you be going to the Wire Rapper Film Festival? I've, I've got a six month old baby. <laughs> when is the film festival? Next week. Um, actually I think we are. Do you know what's on? No, I don't. <laughs> I will be going to the festival, yeah. I can go to the film festival if you play, if you play me right. Why is that? Boring. Crappy movies. Yes, I love going to the movies. I've never been to a film festival in my life. I've got a really good friend who told me all about it. I like mainstream stuff. It looks as if it's going to be a really great festival. Monkeys are weird, eh? The Wairarapa Film Festival is a showcase of nine diverse short and feature-length films, all with a unique connection to the region. Go! Included is Dame Gaylene Preston's 1980 groundbreaking documentary. Learning Fast followed seven Makora College students from Masterton as they left school in the quest to find work. What do you want to do when you leave school? Go to varsity. Why? Because I want to get a business degree. And why is that? Because I want to make a lot of money. <laughs> uh, I don't know really. Um, I might be a rock star or um, join Jethro Tull or something. <laughs> Oh, I want to be a hairdresser and go to Hollywood and do all the film stars here. <laughs> Just on a little mission to the Wairapa archive to go and find out some information. And they've set something up for me, so I'm going to see if I can find something out. Right, here we go. Oh, this is exciting. The story you were asking about. That is the Times Age on the 18th of August, 1980, page 12. That's pretty amazing. The newspaper is on film. That's remarkable. Who knew that there was this resource next to the pizza shop? It's <laughs> <laughs> exactly what I wanted to find out. That's Gaylene Preston and the cinematographer, Alan Bollinger. And look, there they are filming at McCurrent College back in the day. There's something else I also noticed. Beef schnitzel steak, 3 dollars a kilo. You could also buy a house for $30,000. Four bedroom, Kurapuni. 43 years ago, New Zealand inflation was 17% and unemployment was rising. It was a generation who came from a time where they, they were brought up entirely to expect a job. Cradle to grave work in New Zealand. And I knew the devastation to families and to the emerging children that could occur from being found unemployed. And then through that time, it just skyrocketed. I'm quite looking forward to seeing Jane going into the world and getting a job and doing for herself. That's so uh, corny, going into the, the world. But well, school is very sheltered. It just sounds so naive. I'm going to go into the big wide world and all the evil people are going to employ me and make me scrub their floors and, <laughs> and you're going wash to all the, the hard dishes. Way. <laughs> you know, it's, such a, it's a big nasty place out there. Gaylene and her crew spent months filming gaining the trust of the students and their families. Problem was, they only had limited film to shoot with. We only had 10 minute rolls on our camera. So we'd go in there and not know why we were there, but the film crew would have to set up somehow and get behind the camera and then always look as though they were filming and wait for me to do the, ro the, do the, roll, the roll signal. That's the technical part of how it was done. After the camera was wrapped, it was time to craft the story. Gaylene worked closely alongside editor Del King. Del was there for the long haul because it's the edit that's the thing. People think of the shoot, but actually it's the edit. I didn't want to cut sequences. I just wanted to 
get a feel for where the spine of the thing was. And then I'd get the crew and go and book another shoot and off we'd go back over the hill. Well, we hope everybody will get a job. Are you going to go down to the bank and ask? No, it's not good leaving it for next year. It's worth my results. Well, the thing is to go down and ask if there'll be a job and ask if, um, you know, you have to make the results. You have yeah. to be in first, really. Once editing was complete, Learning Fast was shown on TVNZ and a special screening was held at Makoda College. I do remember a teacher coming up to me afterwards and saying, thank you very much. You've shown me my pupils. I thought, you know, that is the problem with New Zealand high schools, the whole structure of how they work. And sadly, I have to say that since 1979, 80, when I was shooting Learning Fast, it hasn't changed. The chasm between pupils and teachers is totally written into the system. I suppose you've got hope, eh? Tomorrow's going to be a lovely day. <laughs> Don't know, maybe it will, maybe it won't. Yeah. Also screening at the festival is a New Zealand feature, Shut Eye. How's that? Sorry if I sound a bit crazy. It tells the story of a young insomniac Aucklander who discovers an online counsellor using a technique called ASMR, a type of therapy claiming to use various sounds to help cure depression. It's to do with when you hear something um, quite delicate and quite light. It's very, very quiet and suddenly it heightens uh, senses inside of your, in your hearing and your brain and it's very effective for different things. Take you somewhere else. Close your eyes. Listen. Local Martin Pro producer Celia Jaspers helped out in the edit stages and advised on Shut Eye's deliverables and distribution. Shut Eye is filmed quite differently, I think, to a traditional feature film. Um, it was very low budget for a start, so that dictated a lot of how they could film it. Can I please come home? Um. Please be nice. There I am. <laughs> they call it cinema verite, and that's a bit like documentary style. Um, the the DP was amazing, and she was very good at just capturing moments as they were happening. There's always someone to talk to, and you guys have always been so lovely towards me. That practically makes us best friends. With the theme centred on the healing power of audio, the film Soundscape delivers a truly unique experience. Let's drift away together. Far away. Breathe. Yeah. P.S. There's already a lot of ASMR videos out on the internet with all kinds of sounds. That will get you, apparently, a good night's chat time. For all you cine lovers, there's four days of the Wire Apple Film Festival with screenings, workshops, and Q&A sessions with the filmmakers. Festival director Jane Ross hopes the event will inspire future generations. Alongside mentoring and supporting emerging filmmakers, my, my dream is to make sure that everyone knows who our local storytellers are. I would love to encourage people to come along to the Wairarapa Film Festival so that they can get to know our filmmakers and their significant contributions that they have made to the world of filmmaking. Now in its third year, the programme from 26th to 28th of May promises more choice and diversity than ever.
I like the small film festivals. Lovely. Everybody gets a chance to have a good rave up. The audience is able to have a decent yarn. It's not so big that you've had to spend a, spend half your mortgage on getting a ticket. <laughs> You're joking, right? Really Maybe looking that. forward to it. Yeah. Hey. Phil Stepping. Local focus.